how do you bake with fresh milled flour? That's a question I hear a lot from you. In this video, I'm gonna go over some tips and some things to consider when you mill your own flour at home. Let's say you have a great grain mill, or even if you buy store-bought whole grain flour, which I don't recommend, and I will go over that in this video too, but I will share some tips and some things to consider with you in this video, how you can bake great breads with your own fresh milled flour. I always like to make my own sourdough starter with fresh milled flour because it activates my sourdough starter a little bit better than using all-purpose flour, white flour, or store-bought flour. And one thing about using your own grain mill at home is you can adjust the fineness, is that how you say, the fineness level of the flour, essentially how fine you want the flour. And for this bread, I am gonna choose really fine flour. And for my starter, I didn't eyeball it this time. I am using a recipe and that's why I am weighing the amount of flour. So I weighed the berries before I ground the berries into flour. Then I'm weighing my water, which is obviously very accurate. Typically I eyeball it because I know pretty much the consistency I want to go for for this recipe. And next I will add just a little bit of sourdough starter. I have another video in which I am talking about how you can affect the sourness of your sourdough bread and using more or less starter in your recipe will affect the sourness. And for this one, I'm using just a little bit. And again, I'm gonna weigh that because we're talking about 10 grams here and that's a very small amount. Once I add that, I mix that sourdough starter really well or the one that wants to become a sourdough starter because oxygen will always increase the activity of all the microbes in there and the microorganisms and even though i am using fresh milled flour which is makes the sourdough starter a little bit more active i still like to vigorously stir it to really get the most out of the sourdough starter because i will show you in a moment that i'm using an ancient grain for this bread recipe and that needs a very good starter. I add the lid and put it in my Sour House Goldie, which I am liking a lot better than I thought I would to ferment. I will leave a link for you if you're interested in this warmer. Here is another um, moment where I am milling my own flour. One thing I will say here is that if you're interested in milling your own flour, it's really essential that you get a good grain mill. I have been using and loving the mock mills. I also will leave a link for you below. I have a video in which I talk more about them. They come with a warranty and they're actually super high quality grain mills that you can use every day for many days in a row. For the bread I'm making today, I'm using Emmer berries. And one of the many advantages of using your own grain mill to mill your own flour is that those berries, if you buy them in larger quantities, they will keep forever essentially if you keep them in a dry and cool place. Also, typically buying grains and milling them at home is cheaper than buying store-bought um, whole grain flour. And the reason, the biggest reason, I guess, why I like to mill my own flour is because you never know how long the whole wheat flour or whole grain flour has stayed on the shelves and it will lose nutrients and it can also oxidize and go rancid which you can completely avoid by doing the milling process at home. I'm adding the grains to the hopper here and again I chose a very fine um, level here. Some people like to sift their flour because the bran and the endosperm make it look a little bit brown. And if you're starting out, that may be the thing to do. 
This starter here is my MR starter and it is not quite as active as I had wanted to. I had followed a recipe and it ended up being a little drier. I smell them. They smell good enough and what I'm going to do here is because I'm doing this on video here for you and I have a bit of a pressure to succeed, I am going to mix those two starters, my white starter and my um, emmer starter. Again, I like to weigh and I am adding some hot, some warm water and from the kettle that wasn't hot but just warm and then some regular water and you can just eyeball it or take a thermometer and measure the temperature. Now I'm adding my starter and I always like to activate the starter before I mix it with the flour which means I'm adding the starter to the warm water which is gives it a boost and gets it ready to go. And again, I'm measuring here, which is not what I typically do, but for this video I did. And as you can see, I like to use my hands because there are good cultures on clean hands that are not sanitized, but just clean. And there is a microbiome on your skin that actually helps your sourdough starter and your sourdough as well. That's why I always like to use my clean hands and fingers to push the starter back if I have it or push it off the spoon just like right here. Now in my bread machine and you can entirely do this by hand but I find that especially with an ancient grain that doesn't have a very high gluten content such as wheat, modern wheat, it lacks a little bit of structure and here you can see how I am mixing the sourdough starter with the warm water just to get that going and give it a good head start. You don't have to do it quite as long, but a little bit of stirring always helps. Now I'm adding my flour directly into the bowl here. I can't really see what's going on because the camera's in the way, but I guess I almost have it here. And again, this is emmer. Emmer is one of the oldest grains. I think einkorn is the oldest and then emmer and then probably kamut or khorasan and spelt and then modern weed. What you will find is if you mill your own flour, it will take a lot longer to absorb water than white flour because there is the bran and the bran has to soak up the water. So if your dough looks very soft and actually sticky and runny. Don't worry about it. I will later show you what I do to always get a good dough with a high hydration, which is essential. And you also want to mix or knead your dough a little bit longer than you would with other recipes with a high ratio of white flour or all-purpose flour. What I like to do is mix it and then let it sit for about 15 minutes, relax, and then after 15 minutes I come back and stir it again. I also like to stir it longer and maybe at a tad higher speed than you would otherwise. That's one of the tips that I can give you if you're starting out with whole milled flour. Now, you may have noticed that I haven't added salt here and that's called autolyze to let the flour soak up the water before you add the salt. I am not entirely sure I can tell a difference in my final dough product. Some people swear by it. Some people say you don't really need it. doesn't matter. So I guess it's a little bit of a matter of preference, personal preference. You can play with it. And if you find one way or the other, I would love to hear from you because I think that we can all collectively upgrade and become a little bit smarter. As you also can see here, the dough is still really sticky. I'm pushing it down from the sides because I really want the salt to be everywhere in the dough. And even though I'm not using the dough hook, I'm using the, I don't even know what it's called, this, this other flat beater, I think is what it's called. I wanna make sure that the salt really gets into all the dough and not just in the middle. And then I'm mixing it again. You can't really over mix 
a whole grain dough. Again, this is an ancient grain. If you're using whole wheat flour that you mill at home, you might actually get a little bit of a better result, but I wanted to show you how to use an ancient grain and mill your own flour at home because that is ultimately better, much better nutrition and more digestible than wheat. And if you're very new to this, you can also just replace a small amount of either an ancient grain to a wheat flour or use a portion of whole milled flour to white flour and slowly increase that portion of homegrown flour and then you know work your way up until you get the result that you like and you don't have to use 100 percent whole grain you can also use maybe 70 percent or 50 or even less than that again pushing the dough together here it is covering it with a kitchen towel letting it sit and you can see it has risen a little bit it actually activates a little bit faster and it may rise faster here's a little bubble than you are used to again if you're using recipe then watch it this is my trick here not my trick but um, to get the dough less sticky is to do stretch and folds with wet hands and i urge you to resist the temptation to add flour to your hands and it's very sticky it's very sticky but just trust the process and do a few stretch and folds you can also scrape the dough from the sides of the bowl and turn the bowl after each lifting up you can also lift up one side and then fold it over itself so there's various different methods that you can use and do that a few times and once you did that you let your dough sit for another 30 minutes and I like to do at least three or four rounds of stretch and fold. After those few rounds of stretch and folds, I let my dough rest for another 30 minutes and here it looks very pillowy and it actually kept its shape a little bit. However, now I'm ready to shape it. This high hydration dough does best in a loaf pan and especially if you're a beginner, you haven't used high hydration doughs, this is the method I recommend. For that, I am flouring my work surface and scraping my dough right onto the very well floured surface. It's still very sticky. Again, I'm not concerned about it. It's a very wet dough. And for a lot of people starting out, they may think, oh, it's not gonna last or it's gonna stick to my hands. So again, just trust it, experiment with it, um, ease your way into it and experiment and don't be worried about maybe not getting the perfect loaf right away because it is a bit of a learning curve and you cannot expect to become an expert baker with just your first loaf necessarily. I'm moving the dough here and touching it almost as if it is hot and I'm pulling it. It's again a little bit more of a stretching and folding it back over itself pulling all the different four sides and moving it around a little bit because I want to create some surface tension, but also, yes, the flour will make the surface and the outside of the dough a little bit drier than the inside. I'm shaping it then into a longish because I have a rectangular loaf pan and I'm making roughly that shape. I have already greased it with some avocado oil. You can use other oils and adding a little bit more flour to the sides and then very quickly because like I see, it's a very soft, wet dough and put that into the greased loaf pan. Here it is. I'll cover it with a beeswax wrap and you could let it sit at room temperature. I My schedule didn't work out so well, so I had to put it in the refrigerator for about 10 hours. After 10 or 12 hours, I pulled it out. This is called a cold retardation or cold proofing, which will make your bread just a tad more sour. But before baking, I let it sit at room temperature for about an hour. I have a cast iron small pan at the bottom of the oven and have some ice cubes because I want to create a lot of steam for baking. I close the oven and bake for an hour. And here is my 100% emmer bread, whole grain emmer bread. It is still warm. I can only cut a few slices 
and it looks a little dense but it's actually very soft and just perfectly with amazing taste. I really hope that this video was helpful. If you have more questions, leave them in the comments below. I always love to connect with you and hear what you're wondering or what you're asking. And if you're new to sourdough baking, I have a really easy way to make your own sourdough starter. So check out that video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.